So this next video is on my personal story around embodiment. Often people ask, how did you get into this? You know, what makes you interested in it? Um, so my story essentially is a story of failure. So let's talk about that. Um, it started off, you know, I grew up in, in England, in the countryside, and I was, I was very clever. At least I thought I was clever. I was only actually clever in one way. Um, the, the way that's re rewarded in school. So I'm from a family of teachers, there was always books around me, I was well read, I taught myself to read and write at a young age. I found school very easy and I thought, wow, I'm really smart, I am. And that illusion lasted uh, until my teenage years. And a few things happened there. Um, around about 16, 17, first of all, I fell in love and I, I didn't know what hit me. It was like, wow, this is an entirely different experience than reading about it in a book, you yeah? know? Uh, and I felt out of love and was heartbroken. I didn't have any resources for coping with that. I wasn't very good relationally. You know, I started drinking too much, found myself depressed. Um, you know, also another experience around about that age was I learned to drive, or I tried to learn to drive. Um, where I come from is really spread out like farm villages and it's really important that you have your independence, you can drive around. And I, I found it really hard. Like it's the first thing in my life I'd found really difficult, love and driving a car. Um, because it's a skill, right? It's a practical skill. And I did a bit of sports at school just to keep healthy, but really it was all about the mind. That's how I've been educated like most people. And all of a sudden I was trying to learn this practice school and I couldn't. I failed my driving test like dismally a number of times. Eventually, just through sure, sure bloody mindedness, I, I, I passed, but it, it took me a long time and that was a bit of a shock. So between the shock of social, relational, kind of falling out of love and the shock of finding out I was a really bad driver, uh, you know, I started to realize, like, hang on a minute, there's other ways to be smart. There's other kinds of intelligence involved other than this one little cognitive one that, that I had some ability in. Um, so when I went to university, uh, which was straightforward enough for me to get in, when I, when I went there, by that point I was less interested in, in psychology, which is what I was studying officially, and more interested in the body. I, I particularly discovered the martial art of Aikido, I'd go to Aikido and have all these insights about myself, about other people. There was a whole kind of learning that was coming, coming to me through Aikido. And I wasn't getting the same kind of learning through sort of dry academic psychology most of the time. And I thought, hang on, that's strange, you know? I've been told that the library has all the, all the wisdom in, and it turns out the body has all this wisdom in. So that, again, really started to open my eyes. Um, I ended up doing my, my dissertation on the psychology of Aikido and essentially reinventing this field um, of somatics for embodiment. Um, eventually I got kind of smart and realized, hang on a minute, you know, someone else must have worked with this body psychology or whatever before. Um, and so I started looking for people, reading their books, eventually ended up interning with people out in the States, people like Paul Linden, Richard Strozzi Heckler, uh, Don Levine, um, interning with various people, so Jose Bueno in Brazil, uh, Miles Kessler in Israel, spent some time with him, different Aikido teachers who were using Aikido in an off-mat way. So they're using uh, Aikido principles in business or peace building or youth work with kids in the slums of Brazil or all kinds of these projects, learning from those people. Um, I did a lot of youth work myself actually in that time, so I was involved in outdoor education, which is a bit like um, Outward Bound or Camp America, if you're watching this in the US. And I'd take people climbing and rappelling, abseiling down climbing walls and doing archery in the woods and lots of very physical things as well as like leadership work, team building work with groups. And again, really saw the body up close, really saw that some people shined with that kind of intelligence. And maybe other kids or other business people that were better in the office or the classroom were actually didn't have so much skill when they were in that, in that um, outdoors physical group context. Um, so I learned a lot from that, eventually ended up um, taking the embodied work into peace building, working in areas of conflict. Um, you know, I mentioned some of them, like the Middle East, the slums of Brazil, East Africa. Um, you know, that work was very intense and um, pressure tested many of the things I'd been studying with the different teachers. I did that for three years. Eventually, you know, it was I thought, okay, enough's enough. You can only do that for so long. Um, came back to the UK. Uh, and, and started a business working with embodiment and thought, okay, well, who needs this stuff? How can I make a living with this? Ended up working uh, primarily with business people, um, also sometimes public courses. Uh, I still do some of the, the peace work or the work in areas of conflict, often around resilience, so how to stay sane. Yeah? Um, so that's what I do now. I do the corporate work with embodiment around leadership, um, work with all kinds of big companies, 
like let's say Unilever, uh, Virgin Atlantic, um, Liberty Global, there are big European telecoms. So big corporate clients, often around the idea of leadership, impact, influence. Um, also this work through the Achilles Initiative uh, with stress, with resilience training. I'm going to Afghanistan actually next week with them. I also went to Sierra Leone, worked with soldiers out there. Uh, I was in the House of Lords a few weeks ago, teaching a few little things. Um, so I mean, really wide client base, which is really interesting to me and helps me see the body from, from different angles. So one project that was particularly influential on me was something called Training Across Borders, organized by Ike Extensions, a nonprofit organization. Um, in this project, people from various countries in conflict, like America and Iraq, uh, there was uh, Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians, uh, Serbians, various people from conflicted countries came together, did various, I, I did Aikido together, various embodied practices, and I really saw the power of that. It was like people that started off saying they hated each other, really very quickly became friends, ended up doing projects together, eating together, dancing together, having a really good time, and, and continuing that work afterwards. So that project was massively influential on me. Um, you know, other influences were seeing how the body could be used in a leadership and business context, how who we are came across, how the kind of things we could create in the world uh, were massively affected by working with the body. Um, working with kids in the slums of Brazil was really influential as well, so hello to Jose Bueno out there. I lived with a circus in Ethiopia, working with peace building there, again working through the body through Aikido and various other disciplines seeing how it could be used due to ethnic groups intention there also as part of the educational process again. So I had a very diverse experience around the world of seeing the importance of the body in many different areas. Also a lot of that time I, I was in places where I didn't speak the language, I was just learning the language. So I spent a lot of time say in Ethiopia looking at people just going okay what's going on because I only speak a few words of Amharic and having to work out what was going on for observing people often in potentially quite dangerous situations. So I think that was very influential on me in terms of um, looking at bodies and learning about bodies. So that's my personal story. Everyone, you know, working with embodiment has their own. And uh, yeah, that was for me is how I learned that the body really mattered and uh, why I ended up working with this work. You know, I, I think it's massively important in the world today that we, we get our bodies back because that's so linked to many of the problems in the world like trauma, like peace, like the environmental problems, like the, how dehumanizing the general workplace is in the world today. So the links between the body and those areas is, is why this matters to me.